bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Welcome to the Republic of May. My name is Ivana and this is a channel where I share my creative journey and some parts of my life living on an island in the Mediterranean. This video is going to be kind of um, somewhat of a special uh, episode and not necessarily that it's going to be much different than what I normally do. But Pia from uh, Traveling Miss Knits, she asked me to either go live or to record uh, a video that is going to support knitters during uh, the Knitathon uh, that uh, she's organizing, which is a 24 hour, basically, 24 hour that are assigned for knitters that gather all over the world and knit for those 24 hours on whatever projects they choose and lots of podcasters they are assigned different slots so kind of they can cheer those knitters on and um, and keep them company while they work on their projects so I was uh, thinking to go live however the slot that I was assigned to I believe it's about 11 o'clock in the night at my time so the light is not going to be ideal at that time and uh, I wasn't sure, I never went live so I wasn't sure if that is going to work and I didn't want to experiment for this first time. So I'm going to have this video pre-recorded, however I will be with you, I'm going to set it as a premiere and I'm going to be with you uh, watching the video at the same time as you and you can chat in the comments and I will be there to answer if you have any questions. So I'm still going to be with you as if I'm live. I'm just recording this intro just a few days before and um, so we can still uh, do this at the same time. I wanted to make this video because uh, I believe that it's not just going to be my audience who is going to be watching it and that it's also going to be uh, Pia's audience. So um, I wanted to uh, and oh where where was I going to say? Yes, yeah, so there will probably be some new people that don't really know me. So I wanted to make this video that uh, is going to kind of show you a glimpse into my life uh, of what I'm doing on day-to-day -day basis and also some things that I'm working on. So I'm cheering you on and uh, let's start. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun, side by side our fears are done, all the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Hear the 
can see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard times You and I can weather any storm Excuse my messy hair, and um, but that's how the morning has been. I don't have a lot of time to record this section of the video because I need to leave and pick up my uh, son uh, Alex from school. Uh, and uh, just next to where I'm picking him up from, there is a large DIY store and I want to go beforehand to get some terracotta pots so I can transplant uh, some cacti that I have that have overgrown and some new ones that I acquired. But I just wanted to check in that in case I record in the shop, you know wh what it's about. So I will see you later. Okay, so we are. Um, I'm going uh, to to pick up Alex and uh, to the DIY shop. Uh, hopefully, they're gonna have the the pots that I want. And I must say, it's much warmer outside than it is inside the house. I'm wearing this uh, jumper that um, that I showed you in the last vlog uh, uh, vlog. The the superwash, uh, the young collective, and inside the house I was a bit cold. I know that superwash is uh, not as warm as the normal wool, non-superwash wool, but I was a bit cold. And now I came outside and it's this glorious day. I mean, I think it's about 22 degrees and I feel really nice and warm in the car. So we'll see how, we, how it is when we go to the shop. But uh, so far, I think the winter is over. <laughs> in front of Ibrahim and, no, and I no. said but that's cringe he goes no that's all right I said how is it all right if you pee in front of the gardener and he was <laughs> he was telling me about some other cringe stuff Mom, that's like <laughs> oh yeah I'm keeping that Alex you can forget about it it's a blackmail thing <laughs> hey babe so is that what you got no this is what I got in jumbo but uh -uh. Oh. Mom. okay help Alex yep. help now Look, I kind of went a oh. little bit crazy. Okay. Wait, okay, mom, hold my phone. No, 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 we're not going to take them inside now. Let's take you as 
full bags and now I'm gonna come back and uh, okay. and then get ah oh! okay I'll just take this okay I'll bring the now I'll slowly start bringing them can you open the gate thanks but right. I can smell the shore it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight this vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn Ooh, we are dreamers of the Sorry for the noise, if you can hear, but usually outside here um, in my neighborhood, they're constantly like working, either mowing the lawns or uh, building some things. But I wanted to show you, um, I bought these uh, terracotta pots a few weeks ago. I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but uh, these ones, I think I showed them on the video previously. And I bought them a few weeks ago. Uh, in order to transplant I have a lot of cacti and uh, they thrive here where I am so every year almost every year I need to transplant them because they just get too big and I either have to cut them in half and put them in uh, different pots or larger pots but uh, within those few weeks that uh, since I bought those the weather has transformed drastically it feels like it's summer here now and uh, I was wearing a jumper at that time and uh, it was what two three weeks ago something like that and now it's like really really hot it's almost 30 degrees so what I'm gonna do now before I pick up Alex from school Alex is my younger son I don't think I'm going to deal with all of the cacti because some of them are okay they're already in terracotta pots but the one that I'm definitely going to transplant is this one which is in the plastic pot and if you see it's already like kind of bursting uh, out of it and I'm going to throw this plastic pot because my goal is to get rid of all the plastic pots and have them all in the, in the terracotta ones so I'm going to deal with this one as well as plant um, some of these uh, bits of cacti that I have cut from um, from another one that I planted and I have left them to dry a bit to color over so they don't uh, don't get any fungus infection so that's what we're gonna do now this morning for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so and um, hope you enjoy
I think I have to um, pause the Spotify so they don't hit me with, um, <laughs> with the copyright thing. And uh, I'm, you're probably crooked right now, but because I have you on the kind of uh, dashboard of the car and because of the mic, you have to be crooked at the moment. I came to pick up Alex and I went in the car. Guys, this is unbelievable. It says that it's 33 degrees. And it was changing between 31 to 32 and 33. If this is what what is this second? I think it's second of uh, April or uh, third of April. I think it's second of April. And if it's 33 degrees now, I'm really, really not looking forward to to the summer here. Um, but I wanted to show you what I brought uh, to knit with me. I mean, ironically, with this uh, weather, but I'm knitting on a hat. Usually when I uh, when I come and pick up Alex, I usually have a sock on the go and I do have one in the glove department But I was looking at um, I have a lot of socks I was looking at uh, all the socks that I have and for the past couple of years. I've been knitting socks for my uh, family and friends Let's see if I can kind of hold and straighten you out like this um, I don't think it's gonna work, but hey Sorry about that. Um, so I was knitting on socks for, you know, like one, two years now. And I last year I focused on socks for myself. And I was looking at all the socks that I have, and I have a lot. I have definitely enough uh, for the winter, for Cyprus winter. So what I thought, because I don't really have any hats, um, I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna make some hats maybe this can be the year of hats and everybody can get them as Christmas presents and I made uh, four really thick ones so we have each one for the family when we go to the mountains or something like that and they're really thick and warm but now I'm making this one out of fingering uh, fingering weight four ply so um, I think I'm using Drops Flora, which was not really my favorite yarn out of Drops uh, yarns. It felt not stretchy enough, but somehow I don't mind it lately. I don't know if I'm knitting differently or if they have changed the composition, but uh, we'll see. At the moment, I don't mind working with it, and it's in this pistachio color. So, um, I'm just going round and round and round and uh, I'm going to gather the, the top. Maybe I'm going to make it uh, as a two layer, probably I'm going to make it as a two layer considering that it's four ply because it kind of then blocks all the, all the wind. Okay, so yeah, I have to, I have to stop now because I have to put the aircon back on or uh, put it higher. I reduced it so it doesn't, the noise doesn't bother you, but it's really, really hot guys. 33 degrees, April 2nd. Good morning. I'm sorry about that, but it really is a morning for me. Um, I'm not really a morning person. So I set my alarm knowing that uh, my husband and my son are going to the dentist that I'm gonna have a house uh, quiet for myself so I thought okay this would be a perfect time to to record so good morning um, I wanted to uh, kind of go over a few things that have happened in the past uh, couple of weeks uh, the past couple of weeks have been uh, somewhat of a whirlwind, but I'm going to keep it light. I'm not going to get any of the details. The first thing that I wanted to tell you is that um, we went, uh, I went with some friends of ours, uh, mine, some friends of mine, three women, to, uh, to a restaurant, Thai restaurant. And I'm... Um, I'm pretty much a homebody and it's very difficult to get me out of the house, especially in the evening. 
um, I always get inspired by going in the evening and saying like, oh, I get to wear my shoes. <laughs> I, get, I get to get out of, uh, you know, sweatshirts and uh, things like that. But in general, that time when I'm supposed to get cozy on the couch, it's kind of difficult to get me out of the house. But a couple of weeks ago, they, we arranged uh, to go to this uh, Thai restaurant, and which is pretty close to my house and it was really nice it was a really nice experience and I should make uh, more of an effort to uh, to do that more often wow. is that mine? Yeah. the lychee? Excuse oh no, that's mine. Thai. That's icy Thai. I was gonna say it's not. Uh, you give it and then you take it away. What is that? <laughs> such an amazing girl. Vlogger, yeah. you can follow her channel. <laughs> oh my god, what's that? That's my cocktail. Oh wow. What is it, Diana? Amazing. It's a very special drink. If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to record your face so they can chase you if, <laughs> if something happens. If something happens More to coming. Me. Wow. So they know who took yes. me out. Ready? Oh, this is your son. Oh, that's mine. Yes, your turn. Oh, wow. That's the boring one. Look at that. <gasps> wow. Oh my god, I got a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's so... How cool is that? Oh, that's really cool. I feel very let down no, now. You have a smell. special glass, you have that, and that's all I get. No, it's nice. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And Joe, what did you that's order? The the smash. Smash. Yeah. So cute. So you can yeah. have your coffee. <laughs> With your cigarette. It's not coffee, it's a lot. There's ice. It just looks like coffee. Oh, so cute. How cool it is. It's lychee cocktail. Really good, thank you. Yeah. Cheers. 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 No, I have to have this. No, no, that's why it's a must. I'm like, I'm not skipping this even if you roll me down the road later. Yeah. No, but it's like he had this. Unfortunately, they got them from Thailand uh, last, so I can't get them now. But I so would like to this for my house. And we have turtles on the wall. The second thing that happened is that, uh, and that was only a couple of days ago, I was uh, driving back uh, from picking up Alex from school. And I saw a dog on the side of the road, a little dog, and it really didn't look like it was in good condition. I didn't know if it was old or uh, or hurt or it looked shaggy and uh, it was kind of crossing the road like not knowing where it is and I got worried that the car is going to come and pick it up. It was just by my house. So I uh, so I picked him up, uh, picked her up, and brought her home um, to see what I'm going to do. Uh, I thought I needed to take her to the vet, and uh, but uh, thankfully the, the owner, as I was on my way to the vet, Mario called me. The owner, uh, she was circling around uh, the neighborhood. She left the gate uh, open by accident, and uh, the dog went out. But the dog, her name is Lola, she's 17 years old, 16 or 17 years old. And I could see that she had cataracts as well and little bumps on her body as well. That's why I wanted to take her to the vet thinking that she was abandoned. But uh, she was loved and very much had a home. So I was very happy when, uh, when she got reunited with her owner and her owner was really pleased that somebody found her.
We were just coming back home from picking up Alex from school and just next to our house we found this little girl and she doesn't really look like she's in a good state. So um, I don't know really what's wrong with her but it feels like she has cataracts uh, on her eyes and, uh, and some things on her body as well. I'm not sure. So Sunny seems to be kind to her. I think I'm going to take her to the vet now with Alex to see uh, what state she's in and then we have to see what we're going to do. And for the last thing, I want to show you what I've been making lately. I've been uh, all over the place and I've been making lots of different things and sweaters and scarves and shawls but the one thing that I want to show you because that took my heart for since the beginning of the year are crochet blankets and for that we are going to have to go downstairs because I'm in my studio right now and it's a very cozy small room which is full of wool and my painting equipment so the sound is quite good so I like to record here but because the blankets are larger I'm going to take you downstairs to the living room with me so I can show you the the blankets that I've been working on Okay, we are downstairs now, which is my living room and uh, behind me is the kitchen, which is uh, supposed to be a kitchen table, but it's really kind of uh, our work table where Mario and I work. And the sound here is probably more echoey because I have really tall ceilings, but uh, because I have more space, I wanted to come down to show you the blankets. One of my favorite things to make is blankets and a very simple stitch. I usually gravitate either towards a garter or a brioche in uh, one color. And uh, I assume brioche is not considered a simple stitch, but because I knit continental and when I knit in one color, it actually really is easy and rhythmic for me. And I made one uh, for, um, for my sister and her husband for Christmas, if you go a few episodes back. So garter, one color brioche or uh, simple uh, single crochet blankets. And this is a garter blanket that I made uh, a couple of years ago. I called it Coyote Blanket. I think that is even in the title of the videos. Uh, from my hand spun yarn. It, I have blended, from what I remember, it was Coriadel, Merino, Alpaca and uh, Llama. I think those were the fibers that I have blended on my drum carter. It needs the peeling, but because it's such a variegated color, it doesn't bother me that much. And this is the blanket that I have on the couch. and it's just always on the couch I, I uh, use it. Now the problem with uh, knitted blankets for me is that I have cats and I have two cats which love to dig their clothes in, uh, clo clothes in the blankets and bite it. So with knitted blankets because they are quite fragile you know you lose one stitch and they can unravel I'm a bit hesitant to make more of those because this one, what I needed to do, I needed to felt it, um, not completely, but felt it enough that in case they pick one of the stitches that it's not going to um, unravel the whole blanket. So then I was thinking there was one blanket that I made and I showed it in the very first video of, um, of this channel. Uh, which is a crochet blanket that I was testing, uh, made out of my hand spun yarn, that I was testing different breeds of sheep and spinning like 100 grams or 50 grams of each. And then uh, I crocheted the blanket with that yarn. So it's a mixture of everything. And I was thinking that particular blanket, which lies on our, on our bed, is the one that is actually the most used because it's always on our bed 
over any cover that we have and we cover it ourselves with uh, that blanket every night so not directly on the skin because most of those, those breeds are a bit rustic breeds but have the sheets or a quilt whatever and the heaviness of that blanket over the top and I was thinking about that uh, beginning of this year and I thought you know what I should really go back to uh, crochet blankets because they're, I really use, use that one a lot. So the first one that I made is, ah, let me show you that one that is on, uh, on our bed. This is the one that is on our bed and it's quite heavy, it's on 5 millimeter needles. So this is the one that I have uh, on my bed and uh, the one with, made with all different uh, kind of uh, rustic breeds. And uh, look how Gotland, Gotland after a while became like mohair, which I found very interesting and it's quite soft in fact when you touch it like this and it wasn't that soft when I was spinning it and initially when I was knitting with it but after a while it became uh, it became quite soft and this is oh my god I wouldn't even be able to tell you what uh, what breeds are inside because uh, I think on the first episode I wrote on the on the screen but I didn't go back to to look at um, which one out of all the breeds that I had in that moment the only one that I didn't use is Herdwick and I found that one very very harsh it was like um, like human hair and then when I was researching uh, Herdwick is apparently often used in um, in blankets and I think in the first episode I said like yeah I don't want to really be covering myself with a blanket so I didn't include that one but uh, all the other rustic breeds are included and it's very warm and heavy and it gives it this comfort when uh, when i cover myself when we cover ourselves with it so this year i started off again with by mixing my hand span yarn different breeds again just picking up different balls of uh, of my hand span yarn and uh, they were mostly singles so what I would do I would hold two strands of singles whatever I pick up from the basket holding it together with one strand of um, of mohair blend and I think this one is um, was brownish mohair blend yeah I usually get those mohair blends from yarnsfromitaly.com because they are not these perfectly soft mohairs that have silk, the ones that I get. They are like 50% uh, mohair and 50% polyamide, uh, which are great for blankets, I find. And the price is much better. So this is the first one that I made on four, four and a half millimeter hook. So let's start bringing it up. I think I'm even too close to the camera for you to properly see. But if I bring it uh, too far away from the camera, then uh, you might not be able to hear me. I love this one and this one has been also on our couch uh, until uh, last week until it got uh, really hot so <coughs> I'm sorry so this is the first one that I made then the second one that I made is on five millimeter uh, hook and I have used I used basically the, the, the same kind of uh, technique, like uh, two strands of my hand span held with mohair, but I chose the ones that are a little bit thicker, that are not as finely spun. And this one I have mixed different 
colors and I think it just came out so pretty but the mohair that I held with it is uh, black the idea that I got for this one and the subsequent ones that I'm making is I made um, I don't know if you watched some episodes ago when I talk about how I approach uh, gift knitting so at the beginning of the year what I do is I make a list of all the people that I need to buy or make gifts uh, for their birthdays birthdays is one list and christmas is the other list at the very beginning of the year like january and then i make a plan for these people i'm going to make something for these people i'm going to buy and then throughout the year when i come across something that i think it's perfect for that person i just buy it i don't wait for christmas i don't wait for birthday i just buy it or i make it and I store it there so when the birthday or Christmas comes I have uh, ready presents and that really works for me because I don't buy or make in panic I tend to choose the things that I really like and that I just write for that person or that couple and also it's much easier on the budget than uh, kind of piling everything together one month before Christmas and so on so for my niece, uh, Mario's niece, uh, it's her 18th birthday in January, so for next January. And what I thought to do is I have already a box set of a perfume and a body lotion, which I usually buy whenever I travel, I get from duty free. I always have some perfumes on hand that I can give in, uh, as gifts. So I have this beautiful set of um, perfume and a body lotion and I thought to make her, make her two pairs of socks as well. Now mind you, that is for next January. So the first pair of socks that I did are these ones. This is Cascade Heritage in Prince. And then I thought what if I, because I used kind of like 50 grams for this, what if I use the same yarn but I hold black mohair with it? And I loved how it turned out. This is how they turned out. So this is the same yarn but just held with black mohair. And that gave me the inspiration to hold black mohair when I do my crochet blankets. So this one, what I did is I used uh, my hand spun yarn in different colors, but holding it with black mohair, it just kind of brought everything together. And I just really, really like how it came out. It's a couch blanket. When, <laughs> if people ask me how many stitches do you chain, well, I don't know, this many. <laughs> I don't count them, but uh, usually this many. So um, this is uh, the blanket. And I just want you to see all the different colors, how they connect with that uh, black mohair. So we have, we have greens and purples and burgundies and yellows. Let me try to bring it a bit higher up. So that's the second one I made. And I actually, I mean, I'm saying for each one, I actually really, really like it. I like each one of them that I make because each one comes out somewhat different, but very, very special and unique and it can never be repeated again. So that's the second one that I made this year. So I've been a busy bee as far as the blankets are concerned. I find it very, very comforting. And I'm working on another two now. 
Uh, another one that I'm working on is also on a five millimeter hook. And I have, uh, about two years ago or more, I have started knitting a really large garter blanket uh, that um, it was about two meters wide or more. And even at one point I asked you guys whether I should keep on knitting on it or, uh, or just frog it or just kind of uh, bind it off and use it as a couch blanket and a lot of you said that I should continue and that was my plan but then I realized that for two years I, I wasn't working on it because it was so cumbersome and also being a garter blanket I was worried about the cats so what I did, I unwind it and I kind of like uh, put it on different balls because it was also mixed different colors and I put it on different, I wind it in different balls and I took black mohair and I started crocheting uh, another blanket with that which is kind of going to give me a similar effect but it's going to be sturdy and I'm going to finish it this time. It's only the beginnings of it. But this is how it looks. This is usually my nighttime uh, project when everybody goes to bed. So I have a couch to myself and uh, I kind of put something on, whether it's a uh, podcast or Netflix, and, uh, and I just crochet away and it's bringing me a lot of joy and a lot of calm at the moment so I'm working on two two crochet blankets parallel this is the one and the other one is on four and a half millimeter hook but uh, I'm kind of going in more not not so colorful um, going in more browns and blacks and whites and this is also relatively the beginning of it. And this is how it looks. My God, I love that one. I love all of them, but these are definitely my colors. So what am I going to do with all these blankets? I don't know. Some of them are probably going to be gifts. Um, they're really big gifts though, so I have to make sure that they go to, um, to somebody who can really appreciate them. I'm going to make enough, uh, to have for each bed in our, in our house, um, as a bed throw, not necessarily, because crochet blankets, especially these thick ones, they are not your kind of cuddly blankets like a brioche stitch, a knitted brioche stitch or knitted gar gar garter stitch would be. They're not those airy blankets, they're like solid pieces of fabric, especially because I'm working with single crochet. But they are warm and they're heavy, relatively heavy. And they give this comfort to me of almost a weighted blanket. Um, they serve a different purpose than a knitted blanket, but I do love them and I, and I think of them as heirloom blankets. So I'm going to make um, enough to have for each room and some extra. And if, I, um, if I'm still as obsessed, I might be making some to sell, but I don't know if I'm still gonna be obsessed after I make so many of them and maybe I'm just gonna have enough and say, you know what, no more blankets for another couple of years. But that's for a later date, but this is one of what, I, what I wanted to show you because I am really proud of them and they do make me happy. And the element of surprise as well, how the fabric is turning out makes me really, really happy. So with that, I'm going to close this uh, video, which is probably longer than uh, most of my other videos. But I wanted to keep you company while you are knitting away on your projects. And I hope I did that. I hope I kept you company. I hope I gave you a glimpse a bit into my life. 
uh, living here in Cyprus and I hope that I inspired you a bit. So I'm supporting you, go on. I'm actually not knitting with you at the moment. I'm always knitting, but I'm not knitting the 24 hour period because we do have some obligations that day. We have uh, one event to go to and I will see you um, I will see you on the day at the premiere. Thank you for watching and bye for now.